In the next few videos, I would like to enable OSPF in this topology. I want to these computers on the left to be able to communicate with the computer on the right. All these computers cannot communicate at the moment. They can communicate over the uh, routing on a stick here. These can communicate on the using router on a stick here, but left to right doesn't work because there's no routing between those two routers. So my first step is going to be enable this to work, but I'd like to do this step by step and I would like to look at each step and learn something from that step. So the first thing I want to do is I want to enable routing process and I want to make sure that these two fellas, R4 and R5, are actually adjacent in OSPF. I want to create a neighbor relationship here between them before I advertise those networks. So let's st stop right here and see what is required for them to operate. So in order for them to operate, they need to be running OSPF on both ends. They need to see each other and they discover themselves using something called hello packets. So they begin to exchange hello packets and once the hello packets are exchanged, each one of them is going to check few things in hello packets. So they have to be on the common subnet. That's the rule for all interior gateway protocols. They have to share the same common subnet here. Second thing, they need to, in the hello packets, they need to agree on the same so-called hello and dead interval timers. We'll talk about that more later. Once this is done, they need to also agree on type of a network. OSPF supports multiple types of the networks and in some networks, hello and then intervals are not the same. So the type of the network will impose the hello and dead interval timers and that, that, that type of a network must be also uh, uh, consistent. So I can use, for example, point to multipoint with point to point if I adjust timers, but point to point and breadth and broadcast network won't work. And we'll talk about those types of networks later as well. For now, we will use defaults. The next thing they need to agree on is the authentication. So if we don't configure authentication, the authentication is called null. If we do configure authentications, we have two choices, simple password or based on um, a hashing mechanism, MD5. So that needs to be also the same. If all these parameters work they should be able to be adjacent with each other. They should build the relationship or we call this neighbor adjacency. If that's the case, let's start off with R4 maybe first. And I want these to have stable router ID and the router ID was explained in the previous video. So I'm going to use loopbacks on both to create an OSPF router ID. So the first step I'm going to do is interface loopback zero IP address on this one is going to be 444 mask will be 32 bits. Now they come up on automatically. So now I'm going to go to interface loopback here and IP address is going to be 5555, 255, 255, 255, 255. So that will form a stable, um, stable, uh, around the OSPF for, for this process here. So I have this 4444 configured now, I can proceed to the next step. In the next step, I'm going to say, I can be in the config of the interface and enable in global config mode process like this, it'll just jump directly from here to there. And at this point, this router already has an ID. It is 4444. I'll do the same thing on R5. So router OSPF1, do show IP OSPF include ID. It's 5555. So they have unique IDs. Uh, th this is something they have to have unique between themselves. Now, the rest thing is pretty much uh, they, they will have something in common. Obviously, the, the network type will have to be the same. In a moment, we'll talk about that. So how do I enable OSPF on interface? So once I do that, they begin to send hello packets trying to discover themselves. 
I'll just jump to interface. Actually, let's go. There's two ways of doing that. One is to use network statement inside the process. Or second method is to go directly to the inter interface and enable that OSPF on a per interface basis. So let's on the left hand side, let's do network statement, the more confusing one. So inside the routing process in OSPF, I'll say network. So if I, oh, by the way, if I do do show IP OSPF interface brief, this is my command will checks which, which interfaces are enabled to run OSPF. Currently nothing because we just started the process. So the network statement is designed to start sending hello packets on a given interface. It's not designed to adv advertise a network. It's designed to locate which interface should start OSPF process on and start st sending hello packets. So I'm going to say network and the address of this interface is in the diagram 101454. So there's a bunch of ways of I can do that. For example, I can enable OSPF on all interfaces, which the first byte have 10. If in this case, I would say 10, enable OSPF on all interfaces starting with 10 and anything, anything, anything. Zero stands for anything. Now the confusing bit comes in here. Instead of using the mask designers of the system came up with the wildcard mask, which is inverted mask. So they say zero zero zero, sorry, zero two five five two five five two five five. So zero matches the first eight bits. All zeros match the first bit, eight bits in this position. So it has to be ten. But ones in wildcard mask ignore what's the next byte. This one ignores what's the here, and this 255 ignores what's the last byte. And I need to specify area in which the interface is going to be operating. They have to be in common between neighbors. For now, I'll use area zero, which will be referred to as backbone area. We'll talk about that a bit more later. So this way, every interface that is now starting with 10 will run OSPF to prove it we can use our do show IP OSPF interface brief and check this out. All interfaces, E0045, E0123, now are running OSPF. Okay, let's remove that statement. We can be more, we can be more accurate in our deciding which interfaces is going to be running OSPF. So I remove that. So do show nothing here here so i want to for now enable this on that interface alone so the identifier of that interface that is unique is the third byte so it's 10 1 10 1 10 1 but third byte is unique so i could say network 10 1 45 0 then i have to match with a wildcard mask all zeros on the first three bytes so zero first byte second byte, third byte, ignore the last byte and specify area zero. Now I am only running OSPF on that interface. So do show IP OSPF interface brief and I'm only running OSPF on that interface. Let's remove that command and go for even more specific entry. So when I do this, I can only pinpoint, I can also pinpoint the interface on which I'm going to run by using four bytes. No big deal. So I would say 10.1.45.4 on R4 and specify wildcard mask all zeros. So now it's pinpointing that specific interface. So it's, the end result is pretty much the same as the previous command, but it's more specific, maybe easier to type in area zero. So I will now hit enter and check that it is now running on E0045 and it is. What is happening? I'll, I will enable debug. We are now sending every 10 seconds because that's the interval and we can check the intervals. Do show interface E0045. Uh, show IP OSPF. IP OSPF. So with this command, I can see the timer. So first, let's remove the debug. Do you, do you all is the quickest way. So you all undebug all. Let's scroll back out and see what happened here. 
So first of all, if I do command, do show IP USPF interface E0045, I will see that interface is up, up, and the timers are specified. This is the ID of, of my router. This is the cost. We'll talk about that. And the timers are specified here. And there are basically these timers are important. So hello will be sent every 10 seconds. Now, it is important because both hello and dead interval, which is how long the router will wait for somebody to send hello, and if they don't, they, they declare them dead after 40 seconds. So they need to agree on those parameters. And hello is sent every 10 seconds. What's in the hello? We had this few hello packets over here. So we see that hello packets. The details will be posted in the description box down below uh, with the information to the blog, with a link to the blog with information as to what those uh, hello packets contain and what needs to match and so on and so forth. So now that we, we have this en enabled, we need to enable this on the other end because they need to discover themselves before they click declare themselves, you know, neighbors. So when that is the case, let's just say I'm going to go to R5 and I'm going to use a different method. Instead of doing network statement, there's another method of enabling OSPF on the interface. And this method is basically per interface. I can jump to the interface like that and specify IP OSPF process one, please uh, start operating in area zero. So that's the, the same thing as network statement, only basically easier on the interface. If I do that, we'll see in shortly that both will be neighbors. And that's our first step. And the next we'll try to analyze what happened between them, how did they do that, how they build the relationship before we proceed to advertising other networks. So for now, we saw the message that they became neighbors, neighbor five on Ethernet from loading to full, loading down. That is a good indication that neighbor adjacency has been built. Show IP OSPF neighbor is our command. We'll check that first. And when we see state full, that is good. So show IP OSPF neighbor on the other one, also full. We'll talk more on that output, what a, what the DR, BDR are, and when we talk about network. For now, it's just we know for sure that they have built neighbor adjacency and they're ready to exchange information. How it's done in the next video.